Welcome to Reaching for the Moon, hosted by me, Ed Grace. For those of you that don't know me well, I worked on the Apollo program for 10 years, and I was a member of the Apollo 13 Mission Operations Team, awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom for returning the Apollo 13 astronauts safely to Earth after an oxygen tank exploded in their service module on the way to the moon, severely crippling the spacecraft when they were approximately 200,000 miles from Earth. Unlike Apollo, the Artemis program has a space station associated with it. And this space station is referred to and called the Gateway. Let's talk about the Gateway today. The Gateway will be an outpost orbiting the moon that provides vital support for a sustainable, long-term human return to the lunar surface, as well as being a staging point for deep space exploration missions to destinations such as Mars. The Gateway will be in a near rectilinear halo orbit from which NASA and its international and commercial partners will be able to springboard robotic and human expeditions to and around the moon and on to Mars. The Gateway's orbit will be a seven day cycle. Every seven days, it will make its closest approach to the moon. That means that each seven days, there's a window for launching from the Gateway to the lunar surface and likewise a window for returning back to the space station. The Gateway will be 2,000 miles from the lunar surface at its closest point and 4,500 miles at the farthest point. However, it will always be in contact with Earth for communications, as it never orbits behind the Moon. The Gateway is a critical component of NASA's Artemis program. The Gateway is being modeled after the International Space Station. Approximately one-sixth the size of the International Space Station, the Gateway will evolve with new modules added by international partners over time, allowing crew members to conduct increasingly longer lunar missions. That's exactly what happened to the International Space Station. NASA has focused the initial development of the Gateway on the elements that are required to support the initial landing on the moon in 2023. These two elements are the power and propulsion element, PPE, and the habitation and logistics outpost, the HALO, and they will launch together in 2023. This is a recent change since NASA put the plan in to have a sustainable presence on the moon. The decision to dock the two items here on Earth and ship it to space as one will reduce the cost and will significantly increase the probability of a successful mission. The habitation and logistics outpost, referred to as the HALO, primary purpose is to provide basic life support needs for the visiting astronauts after they arrive in the Orion and prepare for their trip to the lunar surface. The HALO is being developed by Orbital Science Corporation of Dulles, Virginia, a wholly owned subsidiary of Northrop Grumman Space. The Gateway HALO will have several docking ports for visiting vehicles and future modules, as well as space for science and stowage. These docking ports are the standard that have been used on the International Space Station so that as new participants, for example, Russia, join the Artemis program, they will be able to dock at the gateway. The HALO will be pressurized living quarters where astronauts will spend their time while visiting the gateway. About the size of a small studio apartment, it will provide augmented life support in tandem with NASA's Orion spacecraft. The gateway HALO will also provide environmental control and life support systems to augment the Orion spacecraft and support crew members. The power and propulsion element, PPE, is a high power, 
solar electric propulsion spacecraft that will provide power, communications, attitude control, and orbit transfer capability for the Gateway. The PPE will have the ability to change the Gateway orbit so that the lunar landers can land on a variety of locations on the lunar surface. NASA has contracted with Maxar Technologies from Colorado to design, build, and support an in-space PPE element. NASA and the European Space Agency recently finalized an agreement to collaborate on the Artemis Gateway. The agreement is an important element in the broad effort by NASA to engage international partners in sustainable lunar exploration and to demonstrate technologies necessary for a future human mission to Mars. The agreement marks NASA's first formal commitment to launch international crew members to the lunar vicinity as part of NASA's Artemis program. Under this agreement, the European Space Agency will co contribute habitation and refueling modules along with enhanced lunar communications to the Gateway. The European Space Agency will also provide two additional European service modules for NASA's Orion spacecraft. In return, the European Space Agency will get three flight opportunities for European astronauts to launch and to work aboard the Gateway. Japan also intends to contribute the International Habitation, called IHAB, module, which will contain accommodations for internal and external science experiments and provide additional living space. The IHAB will also have two docking ports where the human landing systems to and from the moon can attach. Well, that completes our discussion about the Artemis Gateway. In our next video, we will discuss the Artemis human lander systems that are being developed to land on the moon. NASA is contracted with three different organizations to develop human landers. If you liked today's video, give us a like, hit the subscribe button, and you'll be notified every time that Reaching for the Moon posts a new video. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and remember, failure is not an option. Bye.